Can we embrace diversity and acceptance of people who are sexually diverse under the umbrella of love, which is the basic foundation of the Christian faith? Leaders of the Christian faith in Belize have promoted the view that uh, being homosexual is inconsistent with God's intentions for a Christian family. What are you, your views on that? Even the definition of what is a Christian family um, causes me to uh, question. You know that Families have always been other than a um, mother, father, 3.2 children. Uh, families have been in different forms um, and have functioned. I think those who didn't fit the quote norm, and you know, I, I don't think. I don't even like to say norm, I would rather say idealized view of the family are ostracized. Um, but I believe the reality is not an idealized view of family, but should s s state what is normative. And normative is families made up of very differing um, participants who call themselves family. You're saying that Christian families can be very diverse including families that have members who are of different sexual orientations. Families are diverse, have always been diverse. When I read the second chapter of Genesis about uh, the man leaving his mother and father and becoming one with a woman, I read it as um, not historical, it's a story where people want to explain how the family came to be. What is, how do we come to be here? Is homosexuality a sin? What are your views on that? Sin is, I think by, by definition, it's, it's about um, you know, choosing to do what, what, you, what you know to be wrong. And so, if you have, if you have, um, you know, a, a certain preference um, that that you know is just innate with, within you that you that you know it's not something you can change. It's, it's something that is is God given, and you can't be you can't be um, a, a, a sinner just for just for what you like. Sin to me is anything that draws me away from Christ, from my God, which could be eat overeating, which could be um, having sex with a neighbor's wife, could be stealing something, or it could be worshiping money or worshiping things. So anything that draws me away from God to me, that's a sin. So that's what I need to focus. And my focus is not to watch you, see if you withdraw from God, because that's your business. My focus is to watch me, because I know I'm a sinner and I need to keep close to God in order to find the correct path and to move forward the way I want to move. So sin, you, you need to identify what is sin. And my job is not then to be behind you to see if you overeat or to see what to do uh, behind your doors at night. That's not my business. My business, according to Christian teaching, is to love you, because the mandate of the Christian is to love. In my view, it's rather shameful the way things have evolved here, where those who are fanning the flames of hate and fear would be people who are of faith. Mm -hmm. That's where we're seeing the strongest opposition in Belize. That's where we're getting the strongest voice and condemnation. And that's incredibly shocking. And what hurts <laughs> is 
uh, in a place that purports love to be the highest, that uh, not a preference, but an orientation would set me apart as being someone who's in need of forgiveness. We need to put love, just put love first and see people for- As humans. Yes. Made- Equal. In the likeness and image if you believe in God. And we don't know what that likeness and image is. None of us. Yeah. Sometimes um, people can in, maybe hijack the name of Christianity to promote um, an agenda which is really political and and, and it's thinking it isn't isn't really coming from isn't coming from the good news of Jesus Christ. It's just something that you know maybe a cultural thing that has you know been uh, adopted. A lot of people carry their own stigma and discrimination within them, and that interferes with their faith because by discriminating against our brothers, we're actually moving away from God. So that is a sin in itself. For me, I consider the story of Jesus and how he, him and his 12 disciples were a minority group. And for me, it's incredibly ironic that the church would not see the parallel in that you have minority groups who, you know, they're now given a voice. They're now, um, pushing for acceptance. They're now suggesting that they're humans just like everybody else, you know? And here it is that the church has the biggest lesson before it. And it is failing in my mind to, um, to you know, fall back on the core principles, the principles of love and respect for human dignity, the principles of just, you know, people are humans, period. They want to live a decent life, whether or not they're of or faith, They're, they want to live just a decent life um, like we do. Even where we have strong views about our faith, um, the church asks that you condemn um, hatred and condemn all these negative uh, criticisms of those who are homosexuals because that's not, the, that's not Christian teaching. You know, Christian teaching is about love, is about finding your way, is about, you know, living a, a good and decent life that's in keeping with the, with the teachings of the scriptures. So for me, it's a no-brainer. I love that our constitution provides that protection and that it provides it not just for me. One day I might need it, but that it provides it for homosexuals, that it provides it for every other individual in this society.